Here is a track map of the HLR circuit, which the TM Master Cup Series has not visited since 2004. This 3.351 mile circuit, located not far from Vancouver, British Columbia, is known for having several passing zones, one of them being into the mousetrap chicane, turns 5 and 6, and also all the way down in turn 9 is the best place to pass, is down there in turn 9. Also, we've seen a lot of passing in the past in turns 12 and in turns 14 as well, along with some passes taking place in the bear trap chicane and on turns 17 and 18. Also, other news for the weekend, Trevor Carrington Racing is not here this weekend, and we won't be seeing them again because TCR is officially done for the year. In their last race, they finished 24th and 28th with drivers Eric Olsen and Dan McKay. McKay may be back in a race car for Japan, however I don't believe Eric Olsen's efforts caught anyone's attention. The weather forecast for the race was heavy heavy rains, and those certainly arrived on race morning. So I'll pass it off to Dan for the race. Thank you Lance, taking out the Delano Pole Award in car number 55 is Zelda Ashby, the winner of the last race in Quebec. Ashby going for her third straight podium finish in a row. Local boy Marcus Leonard is on the front row and you can see it's an extraordinarily heavy rain. I don't think we've ever taken a green flag in a TM Master Cup Series race in this heavy of a rainstorm before, not even in Spa when the, when the Master Cup Series cars first race in the rain. You can see they're sliding all over the place. Go a little further back in the pack, Rachel Rains for Alan Hodges. Scott Bates and Ethan Everett all lose it in that turn in turn three, which is a long sweeping corner. And uh, they widened that turn a little bit since we last visited here. Oh, Adrian Dever on the championship leader does a little spin in the mousetrap. He's going to lose a couple spots. Uh, just tested how wet that curb was. You'll see Yulina Sova in that 34 car. She's qualified 19th in that Katsiv. So Nasova ringing out a lot of speed from that car. Alan Hodge is in car 13, is going to go out of the race after that little frack car over there in turn three. So. He is out of the race. Here's Zelda Ashby, who's just thrown it off. Marcus Leonard and Chris Johans follow suit. So the top three cars have all wiped themselves out of the lead and are visiting a turn nine sand trap. Almost takes a, uh, one of the Ocean Motorsports cars. And here's turn 14. Oh, this is getting silly. Looks like uh, Roderick is using Henton as a reference point and uh, just went off. And you see people are going off all over turn 14. You can see from this camera angle, it drops off in the center and exit of 14 and that's just creating a, a big mess because there's puddles and all sorts of things down there and uh, this is getting a little ridiculous frankly um, see towards the back of the field uh, Kuznetsov and Matt Taylor and uh, well Davina Henton in car number one got a quick off Alexis Reigns will be back in that car for the round of Japan and here is Jack Bouvier and Bobby Porto spinning off on the last corner at the end of the first lap there's a red car over there that's Mike Whitmore Bouvier goes out of the race. Bouvier was adamant that he didn't uh, think this race should have even gotten started. Arto throws it off at the start of the second lap from the lead of the race. And uh, so, looks like the rest of the field seems hell-bent on doing the same thing. Zelda Ashby off again. I can't tell who that is. And that white car back there, Danny Sabin, Arto Kekkonen. Of course, he's already been off. Lewis Kingston, Tyson Lautenschlager, Kurt Pliskin in that uh, 16 car. Scott Bates in uh, off again. So clearly, this is... Uh, well, you do wonder. We do have rain tires on these cars, but uh, they only do you so much good here. Robert Dorian whacks the wall in turn three. I really don't see why um, they're running right now, frankly. Allie Riggs is leading in car number 19. I think this is the first time Riggs has actually led a TM Master Cup Series event. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Riggs coming into turn 14. In this 19 car, she's got a fairly big lead, and she loses it. So, Allie Riggs... Uh, well, oh, Craig Mummer was running in second, and now he throws it off as well. And now you see Allie Riggs losing all sorts of time along with Craig Mummer, and I can't, I can't tell who that was going off. Might have been Johans. Marcus Leonard and Yulina Sova uh, got together. They're going off. There's Delgado in the 837 coming off. And, uh, wow, this is uh, getting a little ridiculous. Stoiler's way off there in the, tw in the 23 car. Uh, Arto's off again. Now watch. Oh, my. Somebody came spearing across the track from the grass, and, um... I don't know who that was. It was a blue car. I think it was Tony Durbin We're gonna, or one of the Yoshi Motorsports cars. Here's Matthias Taub in the 37 car. He's running side by side with Michael Sykes on lap three in turn three, and they both lose it, hit the wall pretty hard. Um, Taub's day is going to end in that 37 car. Same place, same time, pretty much. Rachel Rainsford loses it, spins into the uh, Ian Cooper car who's in this mess. Now, here's a replay from uh, that turn 14 mess on lap two. Yeah, that was Tony Durbin. Wow. Uh, 
I never knew that bra uh, Wow, that was a very interesting move for Tony to make. I can't imagine why Tony thought that breaking on the grass when it's wet would help. Uh, I just caused a big uh, accident there. Bobby Porto, again, this last corner has not been his friend. He went off there in practice. He goes out on lap 13 on the last corner. Gaspar D'Souza goes off the road. Yuli Nasova hits D'Souza, and Nasova got punted off the road by somebody else. I couldn't tell who it was. Zelda Ashby's run for th three straight podium finishes ends with turbo failure. Dale Roswell took the lead, and he spins off on turn nine. Now Marcus Leonard is going to try to capitalize, take the lead, but uh, he just follows Roswell right off the road. It's been a little hard to keep track of where everybody is when people are spinning everywhere. Yevgeny Kuznetsov and the Cats have just inherited third place. The team cut back on the boost for this 24 car, and they went for a... Re a, a setup that has a, an abnormally high amount of downforce because Kuznetsov is having problems keeping his car on the road appears to have worked because Kuznetsov has really been the only car to not throw it off but he's been crawling around this track that is the slowest car on the road by far in the speed trap Leonard's off Pliskin's off so that means um well Kuznetsov has just inherited second now Kuznetsov in the Katsu but hasn't been anywhere close to the front other than when he's being lapped is going to take over the lead because Roswell hits the pit lane and now Matt Taylor in the 121 car just assumes third place and he spins immediately. I have to say that's a bit of a theme right now. I really don't think uh, they should be running at, with these conditions here. This is a career day for Yevgeny Kuznetsov, but uh, I think this is more of a fluke result than anything else. Yulina Sova, his teammate, is the quickest car on the track in the speed traps and uh, she's been off the track a couple other times. She was punted off in turn 14 twice. Uh, and uh, she's in the pit lane, so uh, car 34 is having a pretty messy day, but it's a great day for Kuznetsov, but uh, slightly stilted because of the conditions here, as you can uh, quite easily tell, and it doesn't look like it's getting better, it looks like it's actually getting worse. Allie Riggs in the 19 car is in second place, and that star power in Omeka, Riggs has been quick all weekend long in that uh, 19 car, and uh, we're waiting to see if third place is going to actually make it across the line. I'm uh, not sure he, uh, third place. Ah, there he is. Matt Taylor still in third place. Palmer Styles, another Omeka car. Roderick has moved up to fifth place, and there's Scott Bates in the 88. Roderick and Bates made contact just a couple of, just a lap ago. And Dale Roswell still running in seventh place. Allie Riggs throws it off in the 19 car while running in second in turn nine. Kuznetsov pits on the end of lap six. Allie Riggs leads the next couple of laps, and the officials actually through the yellow flag, and then the red flag. However, Kuznetsov was the first car to come back to the line, which uh, means that the race had to be restarted on Monday. Kuznetsov would be in the race lead, and per Master Cup Series rules, all cars that had not completed seven laps, which is when the red flag was thrown, would not be able to take the restart. All the cars you saw there were able to get repaired, get back on the track, and here we are on Monday, and you can see the uh, looks like everyone in the crowd has turned back up, and Luciano Savaral from third makes a diving move coming into one on Kuznetsov who really I think was hoping that that race would have been a washout after seven laps. Oh, Savarol has whacked the wall in uh, coming out, uh, coming on the exit of turn three but that was a very gutsy move by the Brazilian to try to take over first. Allie Riggs sweeps into the lead of the race with Palmer Siles in that number 21 Renat car in second. Now we're on board with Matt Taylor in the uh, 121 car, the ex Fortner bunch. And uh, the BKR car for Matt Taylor. This is his last independent trophy run of the year, and he's making the most of it so far. Marcus Leonard, the local boy, is still in the race, and now he is on the attack. This has been a this has been an obscenely fast car all weekend long. Lap nine of 40. After two laps after the restart, Ali Riggs is in the lead. Palmer Styles is very close behind. Marcus Leonard has made up a, uh, a large number of positions early on because Nietzsov in the 24 car is going backwards. He's already outside of the top 10 as we come into turn 12. Ethan Everett in the 11 car is going right by. Great run so far by the young American as Ethan Everett moves his way into the top 10. Did a good job on Sunday to survive the rain conditions, but he's doing a great job here today. Yulina Sova in the 34 car is sort of losing ground as well, but not nearly as quickly. She's managing to fight uh, fight off some much faster cars in that 34 machine. Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kekkonen are battling for position. Uh, Devereaux appears to be taking it easy, but uh, Devereaux had uh, some damage after Sunday that needed to be repaired, and uh, I'm not quite sure that they got this car back to 100%. Devereaux certainly isn't driving with a whole lot of confidence that we're used to him, uh, him having in this 26 car, so uh, 
hmm, maybe there is something wrong with that, um, with that car. Anyways, battling with Arto Kekkonen, someone he doesn't necessarily get along with all that well. Arto Kekkonen in that 14 car is now going to chase down the ageless Dale Roswell in the uh, 17 car. And now here we are. Arto makes a move there side by side coming off the last corner. Arto Kekkonen is trying to make up a spot here, but Roswell is fighting him off very, very well. Coming into one, Arto's on the out. Wow, they're side by side. We saw this in Quebec with Roderick and Ashby. Side by side racing, going around some of these road courses. You don't need a gimmicky super speedway to get this kind of racing. All you need is two drivers with, uh, that aren't uh, willing to give up easily. And Arto Kekkonen and Dale Roswell have certainly fit the bill. Those two guys are really digging it out into the mousetrap. Arto is going to have the advantage on the exit because he didn't give Roswell too much room. That's not what he's supposed to do. And Arto is going to take over the spot. However, if you think Dale Roswell is giving up, you probably don't know Dale Roswell very well. Here he comes back on the inside of Arto Kakinen with a crossover move through turn 8 and down into turn 9. Roswell has the inside lane. And under braking, is he going to be able to get the 14 car? Arto's got a pretty good entry as well, but Arto gets a better exit than Roswell. And now, as they come down through 10 and towards turns 11 and 12, Arto Kakinen and Dale Roswell are still side by side, but turn 12 is another right hand turn. Arto is going to run a bit wide, it looks like, and onto the runoff, back onto the track, and they're still side by side. As they come now through that wide sweeping turn 13, Arto has the advantage, but remember, this is another right hand turn under heavy braking. And on Sunday, we saw a lot of spins here. Roswell still not able to clear Arto Kakinen. This is an awesome battle here between these two drivers. And Dale Roswell is finally going to be able to clear the 14 car, it looks like, as they come out of the bear trap. And now Roswell finally asserts, uh, fends off a very, very um, uh, spirited charge from Arto Kakinen. And now, here we are in lap 13, and almost the entire field has hit the pit lane with the exception of one car, which I will get to in a moment, but uh, kind of surprised everyone decided to pit at pretty much the exact same time. And that one car that ended up staying out, uh, there you see him go by, that would be the 24 car. That is Yevgeny Kuznetsov, the uh, hero of Sunday, but he's dropped way back down the order. A fate which has also befallen Gerald Johnson in the t number 42 Tutino. Johnson has had a very lonely race. He has dropped well clear from the rest of the pack. Marcus Leonard in car triple nine is closing in on Palmer Styles in that 21 car. And that is the battle for second place that is beginning to unfold. Marcus Leonard now begins to make a charge side by side with Palmer Styles. And now Marcus Leonard takes over second place. Oh, not quite. Palmer's fighting back a little bit, but Marcus Leonard just powers right on by the Renaka Mecca. Uh, at least for now, because Palmer looks like he might have something coming through turn three. Palmer makes a counterattack on Marcus Leonard, trying to take second place back. But Marcus Leonard has the drive, and he's all definitely taking these corners a lot harder than Palmer is. Makes a mistake there, but Palmer takes second back from the local hero, Marcus Leonard, who is from this area. Marcus Leonard is going to do the same thing Roswell did to Arto Kakinen earlier in the race. Marcus Leonard pulls alongside in turn eight. And now, coming into turn nine, Marcus Leonard and Palmer style side by side. Coming into turn nine and coming out. Let's see if Leonard's able to get a better exit than Styles is. And it looks like it. Marcus Leonard is going to be able to clear the 21 car. Davina Henton in car number one has not been having a very good race. She did not have a very good initial pit stop drop behind Yulia Nasova and Yevgeny Kuznetsov. She has since gotten by both of the Katsub cars. And apparently there is some damage on this number one Volpe that has not yet uh, been fixed. Zach Duff in car number two is having a very good run so far. However, we don't believe that Volpe is resigning him. I would actually expect an announcement on what car Duff will be driving uh, within the next couple of weeks. So we could be seeing Zach Duff uh, back in this series next year, which I think is a good thing. Duff is certainly showing his worth today in this car number two, impressing in front of the Canadian crowd. These two are still going at it. Dale Rosal and Arto Kekkonen's battle has uh, been going on uh, ever since we last saw them. So Roswell and Kekkonen are s certainly putting on the best show of the day and probably of the year because these two cars have not really been uh, separated, uh, well, since the green flag, really. Um, but uh, since we last saw them doing battle, Roswell and Kekkonen are clearly uh, very evenly matched drivers. Both of them have a need to see, have a need to um, do very well today. Uh, Kekkonen wants to leave Flash Racing, 
with uh, strong performances. He's moving over to the Gessler team next year. And Dale Roswell, uh, well, we believe he's shopping for a ride since Rene Riccarmi will probably be in this car. Hmm. I mean, a great disappointment not to have Dale Roswell in the series, especially with the kind of drive he's put in today. And, uh, frankly, for the past couple of races, because it looks like now that uh, the Majestic Motorsports team is steadily getting stronger, Roswell is as well. Adrian Devereaux's day has not barely been going well. This 26 car is continually just dropping further back. So, uh, looks like they may, they may be having some mechanical gremlins with this car, and those have cost Adrian Devereaux tons of points throughout the season. It's a miracle that uh, he hasn't lost the points lead, really, because no one's been able to capitalize when he's been falling uh, short. Anyway, Kurt Pliskin in this 16 car, the Danger Mouse Machine, is doing battle with the Backyard Grill 47 of Robert Dory, and that's the battle for 14th place. And really, this fight has looked exactly like the Dale Roswell Arto Kakinen duel, except Pliskin's being a bit more aggressive with his blocking, and Robert Dorian's been a bit more aggressive with his passes here, as we see here pulling out very late. Makes a move on Pliskin and try to take the spot back, and they're now side by side, coming in, they're still side by side, even through turn 12, and Robert Dorian and Kurt Pliskin are definitely, make, uh, are definitely uh, worth the price of admission here, as if we didn't have that already. Marcus Leonard attacks Ali Riggs to try to take the lead, coming through the bear trap. That was ambitious. That didn't work out too well. Looking off the back of the 19 car, back at Marcus Leonard, he tries it again. Um, no, it was the same move. Uh, so Marcus Leonard in that uh, triple nine car really hunting down Ali Riggs to try to take over the lead. The crowd was certainly uh, very excited about that move, even though it didn't really work. Now Marcus Leonard, a lap later, tries again, this time in turn one. And now, Ali Riggs, I don't think is going to be left with too many options here because uh, Marcus Leonard is really uh, not the kind of person you want to continually defend against because he will make the brave move at times. However, Ali Riggs on lap 19 uh, makes a pit stop, thinking that Marcus Leonard is going to follow suit. What does Leonard do? Stay out. It appears that Marcus Leonard has stretched his fuel while being quicker than both Ali Riggs and Palmer Styles. So clearly, this is a very impressive showing for Marcus Leonard, as now we're seeing some of the other cars hitting the pit lane. Matt Taylor is in. Roswell has stayed out in the 17. Arto is in. I think that's Mommert that stayed out. That red car there. Everett is in. Delgado is in. That's Danny Sauvin in. Marcus Leonard pits a lap after uh, the rest of the pack, along with all the other cars that pitted with him. And Marcus Leonard pulled out a power lap, came out in front of Ali Riggs. Well... See how that uh, is shaking things up. Now, Ali Riggs is going to be looking at Marcus Leonard's taillights. And Marcus Leonard in this triple nine car. Clearly, he is uh, putting on one of his best performances ever. He's been in position to win several races before, but for whatever reason, it's just not happened. We uh, Could Marcus Leonard be one, one of the new uh, Lance Andrews's a driver that's always been so close and never won a race? Ali Riggs is certainly hoping that's the case because Ali Riggs is on a part-time schedule. And we've already had a part-time car win early in the year when Jose Luis Martinez took the upset at Daytona. Yuliana Silva is currently running in 20th place in the Katziv. Her uh, teammate, Evgeny Kuznetsov, has fallen behind Nasova. The Katziv pit crews for both cars made some rather embarrassing blunders during their pit stops. And here's Gerald Johnson, currently running 23rd and last among uh, all cars still running. Oh, tire puncture in Robert Dorian's car. And Ethan Everett has spun off the track in the bear trap. That's a left rear, I think, down on the 47 car. Now, I don't understand how Ethan ever lost the car here. Oh, he just went in there way too fast and lost the rear end of the car. Well, that was a little bit of a... Hmm. Well, Ethan Everett's got some damage to the left side of the car, but uh, he's not pitting. Doesn't know, makes no indication that he's coming into the pits to try to check for damage or anything like that. The Rick Milligan team has opted to keep him out there. Well, that was a strange move. On board with Zach Duff as he's now side by side with Luciano Savaral and the Bolden. Two drivers that are clearly making uh, a good name for themselves today. Luciano Savaral, of course, uh, is going to be driving the car that Alan Hodge is currently driving. And now we're on, this is a right side camera mounted on Savaral's car. Get a good job of that paint, a good view of that paint job that Zach Duff has in the, uh, the number two car. And uh, Luciano holds off Duff, but you think that's going to stop Duff? Well, clearly not. Luciano is holding Duff off at the moment, but that's also jamming up the field a bit. And now Franz Redlich and Dale Roswell are going to be joining this battle. Robert Dorian in the 47 car is going to be leaving the pits about this time. 
in the uh, Xenos, and we're on board with Marcus Leonard, the local boy, as we see that is Dorian right in front of him. Lap 24, Ali Riggs pits again the first car to hit the pit lane. One lap later, Luciano Savarol, Duff, and Franz Redlick hit the pit lane. Dale Roswell stays out again. Marcus Leonard pits on lap 26 with Palmer Styles, but Dale Roswell stays out another lap. Roswell moves into the lead of the race, and on lap 27, Roswell hits the pit lane. Ethan Everett in 20th place after pit stops. Uh, he's stuck behind Yui Nasova, despite Nasova's car being about one, a second and a half slower uh, than Everett's was uh, when uh, Everett was in clear, was in traffic. So, uh, well, I'm not really sure why Everett hasn't been able to get by this rather uh, embarrassingly slow Katsev uh, today. It's uh, kind of a mystery, really. I'm uh, not sure how much damage that impact of the wall did, but. Uh, Clearly, it shouldn't be enough for Everett to be held up by a Katsub of all cars. So, um, it's uh, clearly not been one of Ethan Everett's uh, better days. Kurt Pliskin is getting into some very, very good battles today. He's been very, very racy today with a brand new sponsor. And uh, he's currently fighting Craig Mummert for 11th place. Great job by both drivers. Kurt Pliskin and Power String Incorporated have not really had a very good season. Or at least that side of uh, PSI hasn't. Marcus Leonard is contending for the title. And this will certainly boost his title hopes if he's able to pull the, the race win off. Craig Mummert is looking for a drive next season. And I have a feeling uh, Mummert's Bolden money might get him a spot in one of the privateer teams. Especially since Bolden is still uh, apparently willing to be an engine supplier. Matt Taylor is currently in ninth place. And uh, this, was, this car was sponsored by Fortner earlier in the year. However, Fortner had a lot of internal management issues. And its assets were eventually acquired by Lennard Motor Company. And, of course, Lennard pulled all of its uh, Master master Cup support for the Fortner Bunch. And, uh, well, now Matt Taylor is currently running in Omeka, and he's running in ninth place. This is the BKR team, uh, which fielded Danny Salvin famously, and Ali Riggs into the pits on lap 30. I don't think that's enough fuel to make it all the way to the end. After Ali Riggs hits the pit lane, Marcus Leonard has decided it's time to stop wasting time behind Robert Dorian and puts the 47 car lap down. Lap 31, Luciano Savarol and Zach Duff both hit the pit lane along with Palmer Styles in the 21. Roswell stays out. Palmer Styles pits on lap 32 in the Renaka Mecca. Palmer driving for his own team, having a strong run today. Marcus Leonard is making excellent fuel mileage, and now he's making low fuel laps at basically the same speed he qualified at. So this triple nine car has really picked up the pace, as has Dale Roswell in the 17. Marcus Leonard hits the pit lane on lap 34, and he can make it to the end of the race with that fuel load. Dale Roswell pits with Leonard, and uh, we have gotten some uh, some people saying that that's not the correct pronunciation of his name, uh, Marcus Leonard. It should be Marcus Leonard, according to some people, but um, no, that is actually correct. Marcus Leonard. He's doing a good job today, leading in front of his home crowd with Palmer Stiles, Independence Trophy contender in second, another Independence Trophy car in third, and another one in eighth. Rachel Rainsford, the fourth independent in today's field, is out of the race. Uh, she was eliminated on Sunday. Adrian Devereaux, the championship leader, is down in 14th. Tom Delgado has had a very steady run in 13th. And, and going a bit further back, Lewis Kingston has made up a bunch of ground in 16th. Lap 35, poor fuel mileage from Allie Riggs' SAR power to Mecca, forces her to hit the pit lane. Luciano Savaro and Zach Duff follow suit, as you see off the rear camera of the 19 car. Palmer Stiles is going to hit the pit lane on lap 36. But now, towards the end of the race, we have a very entertaining battle between Zach Duff and Luciano Savarol. These two drivers doing battle uh, around here, the HLR circuit. They've been side by side the uh, almost the entire way around the racetrack. Cars two and three, not giving up, clearly. But it looks like Luciano might have the edge coming down here. And down into turn nine, Zach Duff is going to pull out the last second. This is a move that he obviously learned from former teammate Alexis Rainsford, who will be back driving for Volpe in the round in Japan. Now I get a look off the left side camera on Duff's car at the uh, Clever Media Bolden of Luciano Savarol. Now Luciano pulls up side by side with Duff as we head into turn 12. In uh, around here, they go under the bridge, and here's turn 12 coming up. We're gonna see it. There's that sand pit. There's Luciano. Goes a bit wide. Uses a bit of the uh, um, the, uh, the runoff area out there, and he's gonna be able to hold off Duff in turn 14. But at the business end of the field, Marcus Leonard in car triple nine walked away with this race, taking home his first TM Master Cup Series victory. A very popular win with both his fellow drivers. 
and with the crowd. This win was so popular that a track riot ensued after the race. So, the uh, Canadian crowd clearly very enthusiastic about Marcus Leonard taking home his first win. Dale Roswell has certainly proved that he still has what it takes. He finished a very strong second place, and Palmer Stiles completed the podium in third place, beating Ali Riggs in that final segment of pit stops. Savarall and Duff were beaten in that a final round of pit stops by Franz Redlick and the Gessler, who stayed out an extra lap. Going down a little bit further, you'll notice that Adrian Devereaux was able to come home in 13th place, ahead of Tom Delgado, importantly. Devereaux finishing ahead of all but one of his major championship contenders, and that was Marcus Leonard who took the race win. However, going a little further back down, you'll notice that the ever-consistent Scott Bates is piling on the points in 16th place, and Yulia Silva in the Katsuv brings home another point for that small team. And let's have a look at the driver's points. Leaving British Columbia, Adrian Devereaux's lead over Marcus Leonard is down to only 17 points. Leonard is within striking distance, and now that he scored his first win, I think he could possibly take his first championship in that triple nine car for Power Steering Incorporated before he leaves for Zenus Racing. Alexis Rainsford will be racing in Japan. Leonard Roderick in car number four is a little far back, I think, to take home the championship. But I have a feeling that uh, Flash Racing will definitely be pulling out all the stops so Roderick can have a chance to drive for five. Arto Kekkonen, Tom Delgado, Ethan Everett, and Chris Hans are in a similar situation. However, all of them are definitely going to need some help if Adrian Devereaux is going to be unseated as championship leader. And let's have a look at the Independence Trophy standings leaving British Columbia. Ellie Riggs takes over the top spot of the Independence Trophy in her last Independence Trophy race this year. Matt Taylor is also out of Independence Trophy runs, but Palmer Stiles and Chris Davenport still have a race to go. And on 180 points, Davenport stands a chance to leap over Allie Riggs with relative ease. So I would say the Independence Trophy is looking a little bit one-sided in favor of Car 27.